multicultural music instruction in elementary school. Enrichment through teaching peace by honoring diversity in musical pedagogy. By Brian Callahan, Alliant International University. This paper explores the relationship between teaching in a diverse population and a multicultural approach to music instruction, attempting to synthesize demographic information about the author's school with pedagogical resources. This paper will first review the historical roots of multicultural pedagogy in Western music and illuminate the value of teaching traditional songs appropriate to a student's culture. The aim is to present strategies affirming diversity, peace, education, and ways to multiculturalize teaching, specifically in music. Acknowledging diversity and honoring it in the multicultural classroom incorporates tolerance and understanding within the microcosm of the classroom. Peace is encouraged through this tolerance and understanding. In regard to the demographic information included in the appendix, interpreting the data as an educator creates a place to begin designing culturally responsive lesson plans. Lastly, specific examples of multicultural music lessons will be given as they pertain to teaching Latino, African American, and Polynesian students. These lessons will be analyzed for their positive impact in honoring diversity through multicultural music education. According to the demographic information made available to me through my district web portal on a website called Tableau, I've decided to narrow my focus to the demographics that are present in my school. However, in order to keep a pro-diversity and multicultural mindset, some of the information of how to bring peace and multicultural awareness in the music educational setting will be more generalized. The importance of teaching peace nowadays is paramount. Also, as an intern teacher, it benefits me to do this research in order to see what I can do to positively impact the community around my school and create a culturally responsive lesson and res re that resonates more deeply with the students that I have. To be sure, there are many approaches to teaching positivity and peace in elementary school music education, but I will focus on a few that have been built before in order to expand upon what is already available in this area of pedagogy. Multicultural music instruction in elementary school is required in a diverse setting, and my goal of teaching peace and positivity by honoring diversity with musical pedagogy resonates very deeply with me. A cultural responsive teacher must achieve this in order to in the enrichment of youth. In this paper, I will attempt to synthesize multicultural understanding and honor, honoring diverse communities with tested techniques learned from other experts in the field of teaching elementary music. Starting with the beginning is always a good approach. Ancient Greeks believed that music was the center of all learning because music involved the natural synthesis of thinking, feeling, and moving. While I could extol the virtues of music and how it can affect both hemispheres of the brain by increasing intelligence, I will give special attention to the education of the youth who are essentially new musicians. Though there are many styles of teaching music to young beginners, such as Suzuki method, Del Crows, Orff Schulwerk, Gordon Syllables, Solfege, and others, I will be focusing on the styles of musical pedagogy that emphasize singing as the foundation of musicianship. Born from the roots of Hungarian folk music, in a, in a time where music was much less accessible, Zoltan Kodai laid the groundwork for one of the most popular music education methods in the world. In the, this would become later known as the Kodai method. Zoltan Kodai was a visionary teacher, composer, and philosopher whose, has, whose work has influenced musicians and music educators around the world. Following his folk song collecting trips with Bela Bartok in Hungary in the early 1900s, Kodai conceived of a monumental idea that music could be taught artistically using the traditional folk songs of a culture. Gathering talented, creative teachers around him, Kodai developed a philosophy of music education based on the radical idea of universal music literacy. The Kodai method uses a child development approach to sequence introducing skills according to the capabilities of the child. New concepts are introduced beginning with the easiest for the child and progressing to the more difficult. Children are the first to in, uh, children are first introduced to a musical concept through experiences such as listening, singing, or movement. It is only after the child becomes familiar with the concept that he or she learns how to notate it similar to the Suzuki method. Concepts are constantly reviewed and reinforced through games, movements, song, and exercises. The Kodai method gained international attention being established in the intangible cultural heritage by UNESCO. UNESCO establishes its lists of intangible cultural heritage with the aim of ensuring better protection of important intangible cultural heritages worldwide 
and the awareness of their significance. Elements inscribed in the lists are deemed the significant bastions of humanity's intangible heritage. The highest honor, the intangible heritage of intangible heritage on the world stage. In 2016, the method was inscribed in UNESCO's Intangible Cultural Heritage uh, Kodai Method in Hungarian. The takeaway from the Kodai Method is the great success that can be achieved by teaching it in the traditional style of a culture. While this was a historical musical development for Hungary, especially in the light of the very famous contributions from Bela Bartok, who was a cohort of Kodai's, it is far greater importance to extrapolate upon this and try to teach students in their own traditional vernacular how to engage in music. If Kodai were in my school, he would find a community that was 80% Latino, 13% Pacific Islander, and 7% African American. While there are many students who are comfortable starting from scratch in regards to the terminology and symbolism of written music, the multicultural approach is needed in order to synthesize the traditional folk songs of a culture and the practical application of learning how to read and notate music. Some students with prior music experience have exhibited some degree of proficiency in the different musical cultural idiom. Solfege is an international method of teaching music. Solfege is often used by Spanish speakers as well as others. While I teach solfege to some degree, some Spanish-speaking students only know the solfege and not the letter of the notes, which presents a challenge for me because I don't necessarily think in do-re-mi, but in c-d-e. In my classroom, I bring up a variety of cultural talking points. I like to talk about jazz quite a bit, and in fact, jazz was created by African Americans. It was also heavily influenced by Western music, and there is much common ground to discuss between the orchestrations of Duke Ellington and traditional Western classical composers. I use this to find common ground in black culture. Jazz music is very close to my heart, and students seem to respond to my passion for it. Some of the Polynesian students have taught me songs and dances in Tongan. Also, Hawaiian na natives utilized the ukulele in making music, which prompted me to order 30 ukuleles for my school and now give an option between guitar and ukulele. In the community of students in my classes, I have learned songs in Spanish. I have often complimented music in, that is Mexican because of its rich brass and woodwinds in the bands that are popular. I have a trumpet, a trombone, a flute, and two clarinets in my classroom, and I aim to get more. Many Latino elementary students seem to gravitate towards instrument playing, and I try to accommodate this as best as I can. I try to acknowledge the cultural history of different groups while creating a positive environment for diversity. I even bring up the fact that I'm Jewish, which is another cultural group that we've discussed. Aesthetic valuing is a common core standard in, for music in California. Students are free to make up their own minds about what their tastes in music are, but tolerance of others is required. It is important to know that there are other factors aside from ethnicity which define a community. While I'm not going into great detail about building LGBT lessons, I wish to make note that it is within the realm of affirming diversity. These issues are very important to members and supporters of the LGBT community. Undoubtedly, there are members within my student population in this category. However, I will be paying less attention to this because sexual identity is less important to elementary school students. And while I will be paying attention to whether students treat each other with dignity in this regard, it will not be a focus of this paper. That being said, two facts concerning LGBT students come from an article Implementing Innovative Pedagogy and a Rainbow Curriculum to Expand Learning on Diversity by Stephen W. Sumner et al. Scholars argue that education and increased awareness of the struggles of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and questioning-slash-queer population are critical towards building a society which both tolerates and embraces that community. It is widely recognized that schools are sites of intense homophobia, discrimination, and hate crimes directed at LGBT students, staff, and faculty. The analysis demonstrates the positive impact of incorporating sexual diversity into education. In a Aggression was overall decreased in the course of a 12-week dance program, which evaluated the use of a 12-week dance-slash-movement therapy-based violence prevention program with 54 multicultural elementary school students, and it was found that it was effective in the reducing of aggressive behaviors. The program used a dance-movement therapy group process that focused on socialization of engagement of children in a creative, problem-solving experiences. Pro-social behaviors and methods of self-control were introduced using movement, children's stories and discussions. 
Statistical results showed that teachers noticed a significant decrease in the behaviors of their students of instigating fights, failing to calm down, frustrating, frustration and tolerance, and throwing articles. The children reported significant decreases in these behaviors, both seen and experienced. Someone doing something wrong, someone throwing something. Significant changes in the students' perceptions and feelings about experiencing or seeing aggressions were noted in their not feeling happy and when such incidents, when seeing such incidents, and their observations of handling themselves and responding to such situations showed a decrease in feeling happy and a decrease in feeling scared. Affirming diversity, the socio-political context of multicultural education explores the meaning, necessity, and benefits of multicultural education for students from all cultural black backgrounds. The constant and complex interplay of interactions among personal, social, and political and educational factors of exploring the success and failure of students in schools and the benefits of multicultural education are considered. Affirmation of diversity is an important concept to multicultural education. Positivity about diversity is one of one method of teaching that translates to the music classroom and more. Cultural education, specifically in music, has been charted before, and there are many methodologies that can be utilized in this regard. One resource that I found that was specific to Polynesian students was a publication titled Translating Culture from Ethnographic Information to Educational Program by Kathy Jordan. It describes how anthropological knowledge has been applied to the Kamehameha Elementary Education Program, KEEP, in a multidisciplinary educational research and development effort to create the successful language arts program and underachieving Native Hawaiian children, uh, for Native or uh, underachieving Native Hawaiian children. Special attention is given to the process of translating anthropological knowledge and into effective educational practice. Possible implications to the KEEP program can be utilized in, as described in the study. While there are native, while many native traditions have been lost, music traditions are kept alive through the generations. Even the dance, the hula, is a set of motions from the native culture of that island. This is another artifact that can be utilized in my teaching of Polynesian students. Lives, preparing teachers to teach African American students by Gloria Ladson Billings. The quest for ed quality education is part of an ongoing struggle faced by African Americans. Few, if any, teacher education programs design lessons that are expressly meant to meet the needs of African American students. Although some teacher preparation programs are designed for urban education, the significance of African American culture rarely is a feature of such programs. This article discussed the uniqueness of African American cultural experience and the details of variety of pedagogical and programmatic strategies that have been employed to assist teachers in better meeting the needs of African American students. As a lover of jazz music, I often use this as a window into my understanding of African American culture and my passion for it through music. As a jazz musician myself, this is a subject which I have considerable knowledge of. I often tell students stories about Louis Armstrong and other jazz musicians. I often say Louis Armstrong was my favorite musician and that he was one of the rather amazing characters for being able to both sing and play the trumpet and be famous for both of these things. I even use videos of old jazz concerts to motivate students to want to play music, as well as some of the old virtuosos of the past such as John Coltrane, Miles Davis, Thelonious Monk, Ella Fitzgerald, and more. My enthusiasm for jazz and teaching it comes across as positivity and respect for the African American culture which produced such great jazz artists. Negotiating the American Dream, the Paradox of Aspirations and Achievement Among a Latino Students, and the Engagement Between Their Families and Schools, by Nancy E. Hill and Catherine Torres, states, The lagging achievement of U.S. Latinos is staggering. Latinos have the highest high school dropout rate. Further, second and third generation Latinos in the United States perform less well than do recent immigrants. These statistics belie the hopes and aspirations for upward mobility, a better life, and the deep value of education that are tightly held by many Latino immigrant families. Understanding this paradox between the aspirations of Latino families and the academic outcomes uh, is the focus of this article. The experiences of Latino children in the U.S. that 
is the incongruence between the cultural worldviews of the U.S. schools and the Latino families and the interactions and expectations for partnerships between families and schools are integrated and applied to the question of why Latino students are not reaching their potential despite goals for achievement and significant parental sacrifice and investment. End quote. Mexican high school students were administered semi-structured interviews and the psychological experience of, the ethni of their ethnicity. The interview focused on individual friendship, peer groups, and family domains. Qualitative analysis of interview transcripts revealed six domains, including ethnic identity, socialization, intra-ethnic support and challenge, inter-ethnic relations and attitudes, ethnic transcendence, and ethnic differences and similarities. These six domains were graphically depicted in the differentiated ethnic self-concepts from ethnic identity processes, and they identity and, and identified the intra-ethnic and inter-ethnic influences of the ethnic self-concepts and identity processes. There were three ethnic self-concepts, i.e. cultural self, possible minority self, and self that transcended ethnic group boundaries. These basic three ethnic self-concepts are consistent with other researchers' identifications of analogous ethnic self-concepts and socialization messages across a wide range of contexts. Implications for future empirical and theoretical research are discussed. In regard to this research, I believe that a positive influence is needed, as well as some sort of ambassador to academic instruction. Cultural responsive pedagogy aside for a moment, I believe the political atmosphere of this country has had a negative effect on individuals and communities in this category. This makes it more important to have a plan to teach multicultural education in regards to music in elementary school with respect to diversity for the goal of peace within the, and around the school community. Starting with the community understanding, students in this population can begin to feel more comfortable at school. The problem with many approaches to teaching music in elementary school vary by content, choice, and implementation, but one cannot overstate the importance of a culturally responsive teaching strategy. In order to teach peace and positively affirm multicultural identities within a community of students, demographic information should be utilized in order to better serve the community. By understanding the cultural makeup of a new teaching assignment, a teacher can better serve the community by appealing to a multicultural method with emphasis on diversity and honoring these communities by bringing the folk songs and dances of representative cultures into the classroom. In the 1900s, Kodali sought to teach Hungarian students using Hungarian folk songs. That was a revolutionary concept at, at the time. Bella Bartok aids in the creation of new material, and with the help of others, Kodai method was developed in order to teach in order to teach specific cultures western classical music the demographic information included in the appendix illustrates the breakdown of the ethnicities at my specific school site in east palo alto utilizing this information steps can be taken in order to engage members of these communities which include latinos polynesians and african americans each one of these groups has a rich cultural history and honoring them in class helps engage students and foster peace through understanding of diversity. The Kodai method indicate the Kodai method indicates singing is the gateway to musicianship. Building together bringing together students to sing songs from a variety of cultures is an is already in my curriculum. But what does this mean to teach peace? Admittedly, there are a number of answers. In order to teach peace, one must teach tolerance. And in order to teach tolerance, one must teach how to respect diversity. And in order to respect diversity, a multicultural perspective is important to use in the community. The beauty of music is that it is both the glue of the civilization or culture, and also the offering or gift of that culture. Bringing the best examples of Polynesian, Latino, and African American music is not only an interesting way to engage a class, but promotes peace, tolerance, and understanding in a multicultural environment.